Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to four player game, Turing Machine, designed by Fabian Gridel and Joanne Levette and published by Scorpion Mask, who helped sponsor this video. Here, you and the other players will be racing to deduce a secret three number code by asking questions of a machine made entirely out of cardboard and paper. And the machine will answer back. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, put this machine tile in the center of the play area and notice it's divided into six sections labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F. That will be important later. Next, organize these various punch cards by the values at their tops into the slots of this included tray, which you'll also set nearby. All of the ones go into the first slot, all of the twos go into the second slot, and so on. Now we need to pick a problem to solve, and the rule book comes with 20 to start you off, but you can also go to the TuringMachine.info website, where you'll find quite literally millions of additional problems to play, including daily challenges. For this video, we'll pick the first problem in the rule book, and we will be spoiling part of it. But again, there are millions and millions of these challenges to play, so it'll be worth it to spoil this problem in order to be able to understand how to play all the millions of others. I do want to point out the solutions to these problems in the rule book are given here in the bottom right hand corner in small print upside down. So I'm blurring this out so you don't accidentally see it. And you'll want to avoid looking down here until the end of each of these games, being careful to only look at the answer for the problem you're currently playing. The problem you pick will tell you how to set up the rest of the machine. The very first column tells us which sections of the machine we're going to use. In this case, the spots labeled A, B, C, and D. The second column indicates which of these criteria cards you'll need to put by these related sections of the machine. Criteria cards have numbers on the bottom. So for this machine, we're told we need criteria number 4, 9, 11, and 14, which I have pulled out, and the rest we can just return to the box. The final column of the problem tells us which verification cards we need, and we'll look at those in just a moment. But notice that these verification cards can be listed in one of four different colors. These are the verification cards, and they also have four different colored numbers around their outside edges. So make sure to look at the same colored number as what the problem shows when you're figuring out which ones to pull from the stack. In this case, we need the ones with the green 447, 646, 566, and 322, which I've pulled out here. Now we set the cards we've collected around the machine beside the indicated sections with the criteria cards set closest to the machine and the verification cards arranged on the outside and face down. Then take the included dry erase marker and mark the letter on the back of each verification card that represents the section of machine it belongs to. This will help with the gameplay later as we'll see. Now each player collects a note sheet from the included pad and a player aid, which doubles as a screen to hide your note sheet behind during the game. I'm gonna use the sheet that's on the pad just to make it easier for me to write on during this video, but you can tear these off when you play. In this top box, you can add your name, so I'll just write Rodney here, and then below in this area, you can write the number of the case you're solving. So in this case, problem zero one. These columns represent the sections of the machine we've put cards beside, and you can cross out any sections that aren't being used. For this problem, we aren't using sections E or F. I should mention, if you need more note sheets, you can print them off for free from TuringMachine.info. Also, you can play this game solo or cooperatively, and we'll discuss how to do that at the end of the video, but here we're gonna focus on the competitive mode of play. And that's the setup. In Turing Machine, you and the other players will be trying to see who can be the first to deduce a secret three-digit code, and each of the digits can be a value from one to five. Players will ask the machine questions and privately get back information that will help them deduce the secret code, be the first to correctly uncover the code, and you win. The game is played over a series of rounds, and each round is broken into four steps, starting with composing your proposal. Every round, you'll use one of these lines of your sheet, starting with the topmost empty one. And right here, you'll secretly create a number that you'll write in that's anywhere from 111 to 555, because that's the possible range of numbers that the actual secret code number that you're trying to find will exist in. 
Now, why you might pick certain values will make more sense later on, but for now, let's just pick 532. Also notice that each value goes with a different colored shape. This is important because you're now going to compose your proposed number from these punch cards using the values from the related colored shapes. Our sheet says that we need the five with a blue triangle. We also need a three with a yellow square, and we need a two with a purple circle. You then lay these punch cards on top of each other so that the numbers are in a row at the top matching the number you chose. All of the players do this step together, writing their proposed numbers in secret behind their screen, and then taking and assembling their punch cards at the same time. Now, although your number is written in secret, it's okay if you happen to see someone's proposed number on their punch cards. That's perfectly fine. And there are multiple copies of each punch card. But in the rare case that you need one that is no longer in the tray because maybe someone else is using it, just wait until a player is finished with that card during this round, and then you can take it when they're done and continue the rest of the steps of this round for yourself. With that in mind, now let's learn about the next steps of the round, questioning. Here you'll ask the machine questions about the number you picked in order to learn how your number relates to the secret number you're racing the other players to uncover. Now, this will make a lot more sense with some examples, so let's take a look. To interact with the machine, first pick one of its sections to ask a question to. We'll go with section A and start by examining its criteria card. This will give us a visual summary and some text describing the kind of information we can get from this section of the machine. In this case, we're told that it will give us clues as to how the yellow number in the secret code relates to the number four. And remember, the yellow number is always the second digit in the code. At the bottom of the criteria, we are then told the three possible ways it could relate to the number four. It will either be less than four, equal to four, or greater than four. Which of these outcomes we're going to learn about is based on the way we've created our number. You'll notice we picked a yellow number that's less than four. So what we're really asking the machine is if we're right in thinking that the yellow number in the secret code is also less than four. We are not asking the machine, is three the right value for the yellow number in the secret code? This section of the machine can't tell us that. It can only tell us if the yellow number is less than four, equal to four, or greater than four. And since we've created a situation where we're proposing that the yellow number is less than four, this section of the machine will tell us whether or not we're right. To find out what the machine knows, we then take that criteria's verification card from the machine, we turn it over, and then line it up behind our punch boards so that the circle, square, and triangle show through in these corners. This will leave one other window on our punch boards that will now show either a check mark or an X. A check mark means the verifier agrees with the aspect of the proposal that we're presenting, and an X means it doesn't. So in our case, we're testing the idea that yellow is a number less than four because our proposal has a yellow number less than four. We got an X, and that means that the yellow number in the actual secret code number is also not less than four. Now, during a round, once you've created a number to test, you cannot change that number. But just to help you with this example, watch what happens if I put a two as my proposed middle number. When I put the verifier behind this combination, I still get an X, which is what we should expect because a two is also less than four. And we know from the test we just did that the secret yellow number is not less than four. Now, Again, you can't change your proposal during a round, but let's pretend for a moment we had instead put a number five in the middle position. So now we have five, five, two. If we put the verifier behind this, we are now testing whether or not the yellow value in the secret code is higher than four, since the number we have chosen is also higher than four. And you'll notice we got an X. This means in the actual secret code, its yellow number is also not greater than four. So that means that we now know in the secret code number, the middle yellow number is not less than four and it's not greater than four. So that means it's got to be four. 
As we're about to see, if we had tested this section of the machine putting a 4 here, the machine would have given us a check mark, confirming that the yellow number in the secret code is also equal to 4. Now to show all of these examples, we changed our proposal number around a bunch, so let's reset it back to what we had originally used, which was 5, 3, 2. And remember, when we tested this section of the machine, we were asking, is the yellow number less than 4? Because we had put a value less than 4 here, and we were given an X. Anytime you test a section of the machine, you come to that related column of the current row and mark whether you get a check mark or an X in the related box. You not only record that information in secret, but you always test in secret too. In other words, when I pick up a verification card to put behind my punch boards, I don't let anyone else see the result that I was given, and then I mark that result in secret as well. Every time you interact with the machine, you must record your result in the related section. This is important for tiebreakers later, and it's important because, at most, you can only test your number against up to three sections of the machine each round. So far, we've just tested one section, so we could test up to two more, or just one more, or even do no more tests if we don't want to. Now, in the very first round, you'll likely want to test three times to learn as much as possible, but as rounds go on, you may feel that you know enough or that you won't gain any new information based on the number you proposed and the options that are provided by the machine. You can also use your sheet to organize the information you're learning. For example, with our first test, we determined that the yellow number can't be less than 4. Here, we see a table showing all the possible numbers each digit of the code could be. So we can cross out 1, 2, and 3 for yellow, since we know they aren't possible. In this area, you can record additional notes based on what you've learned from each section of the machine. For example, we tested in section A, and I might write yellow is not less than 4. You will also find an example of how to use your notes section on the bottom of your player screen, so refer to that for additional ideas. When you're finished performing a test, return the verification card back to the machine, and the check mark on the back will help remind you which section of the machine it should go back to. With that understood, let's do a couple more tests just to help ensure we understand how to interpret the machine results. Let's say we decided to test the C area next. This verifier will compare the blue number to the yellow number, letting us know if blue is less than yellow, or if blue is equal to yellow, or if blue is greater than yellow. In this case, our proposal shows a blue value higher than the yellow value, so that means we're asking the machine, is blue also greater than yellow in the actual code number that we're trying to deduce? When we slide the related verifier behind our cards, you'll notice we get an X. This means blue is not greater than yellow in the actual code, since that's the situation we presented, and the machine gave us an X. We now mark an X in the C verifier column, and we might indicate down here that we know blue is not greater than yellow. Now let's test section D of the machine with our proposal. This verifier checks for which color's number is smaller than either of the others. In other words, we're either going to be testing if blue is the smallest value, or if yellow is the smallest value, or if the smallest value is purple. In our proposal, we've created a combination where purple is the smallest value. So when we use the verification card from section D of the machine, and we see this check mark, it means the machine is confirming, yes, purple is the smallest value in the secret code as well. Now remember, this is not telling us that 2 is the correct number for the purple value in the code. It is just confirming that, yes, in the secret number, purple will also be smaller than either of the other two values. For example, let's just say for a moment that we replaced this 2 with a 1. You'll notice we're also getting a check mark because the machine is just agreeing with the relationship we created, where purple is smaller than the other two numbers. It's not saying that one or two is the actual purple value. With that understood, we'll mark a check mark in the D box. Rather than write a note, we can now write our final deduction on this line. Purple is smallest. Also, since we know that yellow has to be 4 or 5, 
and we know that purple has to be smaller than whatever the yellow value is, we can say with confidence that purple in the actual code cannot be five. You have to be careful when performing tests on criteria like this one that we were just looking at. If our proposal had been 522, we're not really asking a valid question for this section of the machine because we have not created a situation where one of the colors is smaller than the other two. Yellow and purple are both tied for smallest, so we will always get an X in this case because the machine isn't seeing an example where one of the values is clearly smaller than the other two. As you play the game and get into more complicated problems, you'll find an assortment of criteria cards that might end up in the machine. And we're not gonna go through each of these in this video. However, you'll find how each of them work explained on the last two pages of the rule book in case you have any questions while playing. As I said before, understanding how to ask the machine questions and decipher its answers can be a bit challenging until you've actually played the game, but I hope I've given you a sense of how it works. Now, during the question step of the round, players aren't taking turns. Everyone should just pick up verification cards and test their proposals as they like. And if you need a card that someone else is currently using, just wait until they're finished and then use it after. Also remember, you cannot change your proposal during a round. I can't be swapping out numbers I have with the ones in the tray. These must stay the same. And also remember, you can test up to, but no more than three of the sections of the machine. Once everyone is finished, it's time for the deduction step of the round. Here, players will put their punch boards back into the tray where they belong, making it easier to find them when necessary in future rounds. This is also a time for players to write any additional deductions on their sheet that they might have come up with and to consider what they've learned this round. Once everyone is ready, it's time for the end of round step. Here, everyone extends a closed fist into the center of the table and counts the three out loud together. One, two, three. On three, each player must either give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thumbs up means you believe you've deduced the secret code from what you've learned about what it could possibly be based on your findings. A thumbs down means you haven't figured it out yet. If nobody gave a thumbs up, then just start a new round. To do that, each player again secretly records a new number on the next line of their sheet and then builds it with punch boards, testing it up to three times against the machine. On the other hand, if one or more players have given a thumbs up during the end of round step, you go to the verification and end of game step. Players who gave a thumbs up must write what they think the code is somewhere on their sheet in a clear way. Then each of them secretly checks the answer in the solutions section at the bottom of the rule book here, or by tapping the solutions button on the website if you're playing one of the website challenges. If your answer does not match the correct answer, then you are eliminated from the game. If all of the people who gave a thumbs up are eliminated, then the game will continue with any players who remain. If only one person remains, then they just automatically win. On the other hand, if a player who gave a thumbs up did get the right answer, they show their recorded answer and win the game. Now, if multiple players gave a thumbs up and more than one of them were correct about the secret number, those players are tied. And now the tied player who managed to get the right answer using the fewest questions wins. The number of questions you asked is represented by the X's and check marks you put in these boxes. So this player asked one, two, three, four, five, six questions, while this player asked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this player wins. If more than one player had the right code and tied for fewest questions asked, then those tied players share the victory. Either way, with the game over, you can now try a new challenge. Just first, put all the verification cards and criteria back into their related decks, and don't forget to erase the mark on the back of the verification cards. And then find a new problem, either in the rulebook or from the online website. The game also comes with rules for solo and cooperative modes where you play against the machine using the TouringMachine.info website, trying to solve the secret code in the fewest rounds possible on one shared sheet. This is explained in a bit more detail here on the back of the rulebook if you're curious, and you'll also find suggestions for how to balance the difficulty if you have players at the table who are more experienced with the game than others. But those rules I'll leave for you to discover on your own. 
Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Turing Machine. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.